we picked some absolutely beautiful strawberries this morning. They were, it's kind of chilly outside, it's wet. The strawberries were so sweet and it's definitely our biggest cleanup harvest to date this year. But we do have a little bit of cold tomorrow. Hopefully it's the last day of the year for cold weather like this. So we're gonna start covering. You can see the guys are getting all of the remay out, kind of pulling it over two rows and then they'll come back through, get it pulled over the rest and get this field nice and bundled up for tomorrow's cold weather. And then we'll uncover by the next day and hopefully we'll start getting lots of ripe fruit. This is exactly what we wanna see, all these green berries. This is just from the last couple of rows. They picked about, oh, 25 of those this morning. And they are the sweetest tasting berries that we've had this year. Just delicious. And you, if you remember from some of the last videos, we had a lot of berries like this, even a lot of misshapen berries from the cool weather. But we're starting to see really ripe, sizable berries. Berries with a lot more, a lot more size on them, a lot more color, and definitely a lot more flavor. It's still wet, so nothing's changed there. We haven't dried out since we had that really large storm last week. You can see the ground, it's just saturated is what it comes down to. It's just saturated. <laughs> We've been checking in on these onions. So I thought we'd give them a glance today. They look great. They hadn't grown a whole lot since last week or the week before last, but they do look really good and they're right on track to be ready to start picking during strawberry season. Just got back from the field with some fresh greens. So today is the last day in the foreseeable forecast of cool weather, but we made the decision actually see there was frost on here this morning we made the decision to go ahead and stay covered throughout today we're going to uncover tomorrow that sun's beating down on this remake it's going to really start to heat those plants up which is exactly what we want it might gain us a day or two in uh, the speed of ripeness for the berries under here so we're going to go ahead and stay covered today we're picking some collards this morning. These collards were pretty damaged during the freeze in late December, but we're cleaning up what we can. Now, because they've been through a couple freezes, the flavor of these collards are phenomenal. Que paso, Rene? Bueno? So these bunches look pretty good. You'll hear us talk about it a lot, how between late December and early February, there are years where it's cover and uncover, cover and uncover. Decisions to keep them covered even though it's not supposed to freeze. Decisions to cover based on the amount of rainfall. A course decision to cover based on freezing temperatures. And so sometimes this time of the year in Southeast Texas strawberries, it's a uh, cover and uncover day. So if you've been following me for a while, then you've heard me talk about up potting. And up potting is simply when we take a tray with a bunch of cells, like a 128, and we up pot them into something bigger, like a four inch pot, three and a half inch pot, what have you. And so all of these tomatoes just got up potted and what this does, if done correctly, is we're just able to keep them in the greenhouse a little bit longer. We're able to go out to the field or sell in the store bigger plants. Uh, and it's really like tomatoes, for example, it's really hard to hold tomatoes back. Peppers, it could be a little easier. Maybe you don't feed them in the greenhouse and you can slow them down a little bit, but tomatoes, 
very hard to hold them back. So up potting is a really good technique to hold them in the greenhouse. For peppers, up potting is a really good technique, especially if they slow down. And so of course, if you wanna hold them in the greenhouse longer, it's a great thing to do. But oftentimes I'll get questions about why have my peppers stopped growing in the 128s? Chances are, without you even knowing it, the peppers just got too big for those little cells. And normally within two weeks of up potting, you start to see rapid growth on these. So what we're doing here is squaring off the top of these beds and getting them ready to lay plastic over the top of them. And so this implement here, just as you can see, just squares up the top of that bed, makes it nice and flat, makes it easy for the plastic layer to run over it. This is all gonna be you pick vegetables. So things like potatoes, squash, like I said before, that's why our furrows here are so wide. We're gonna go, go ahead and lay the plastic on the squared off beds. The irrigation line was already laid underneath. This will be for planting potatoes, specifically you pick potatoes. All right, so the plastic you saw us laying and the irrigation you saw us laying is going into potatoes. A nice little bucket of seed potatoes there. And getting them in the ground. Planting them like this, yes, it takes a little bit longer, obviously, than using a machine planter. But growing them on the plastic, again, it's just so much easier. These will be used for you pick. So we're getting a retail price on these. So taking a little bit longer to plant them, it's okay. It's always interesting to see the different preferences that some of our team has. Just as an example, putting seed potatoes in a bucket, planting them as you go versus laying seed potatoes out on the plastic and then going back down and planting them. Neither way is wrong, both ways are right, just personal preferences based on the way they like to do things. All right, we're here with our our little uh, mobile egg, egg house and uh, we got it framed up today. So I guess in a few days we'll start putting the, the roof on it. Uncle Alfred, one wall done. <laughs> Gotta go rip some trim now and of course it's raining. <laughs>
<laughs> Can't catch a break from this rain. Buenos dias. <laughs>